I'm Elizabeth Nolf McDonald, Corporate Communication Coach, and welcome to The Verbal Edge. This program is for you who values growth and who also values, fosters, and appreciates communication skills regardless of your age. And tonight, you're going to meet a woman who personifies that. Tonight, you're going to meet a woman after whom I have patterned my life because may I introduce to you my mother, Millie Nolf, the woman who, through her example, has inspired me to love the Lord, to serve others, to enjoy learning, to value relationships, and to be passionate about words because that's how she has lived for the past 93 years. Hello, Mother. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> well, before we begin, I'd like to tell you what happened when you invited me to be on the show. Okay. I got to my computer and I looked up uh, uh, what food would be necessary to feed my brain a little bit. And the computer said avocado, red beets, and cashews. And then another thing it said was that if you're apprehensive to eat an orange an hour before your appointment. So I've had my avocado, my red beets, and my cashews, and I've eaten my orange, so I'm ready for it. That would you. explain the orange in the car on the way to that the, explains it. the library. Mother, <laughs> thank you. You always amaze me, and that's one of the reasons why I'm having you on, because I have learned so much from this woman. Not only communication skills, but ways to increase brain capacity, et cetera, in a, in a love for life. Now, Mom, I'm going to hit you with a word right away. Do you know what a nonagenarian means? No, I don't. It's a person in his or her 90s. Oh, I should have known that. Because octogenarian... That seems That's to be right. about as long as people live, because I, I hear that a lot, but I don't, I don't hear nonagenarian. And nanos means ninth. It's Latin. So there okay. you go. Now, I asked you a little bit beforehand. I'm going to start with the most difficult question, because I said I was going to ask you this. What words have you been using lately that you haven't used for a while? Or what word have you learned lately that you are starting to use? You know, you told me to think about that. Uh -huh. I completely forgot to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I will go back a little bit okay. and tell you about a word that I used to use a lot. All right. And that was, I can't think Indeed. Indeed. Right? Indeed. Indeed. I would say, anybody would ask me a question, instead of saying yes or no, I would say indeed. And after a while, I find my grandchildren saying indeed instead of yes or no. And it tickled me. Mm -hmm. Now, you told me something else when uh, about a week and a half ago I was talking to you and you said, I'm doing something in preparation for this show. What were you doing? You remember you were, you were working on a certain word. I don't remember. Remember? Yeah. You were going to... Oh, yes. I said, I am going to try. Instead of saying yeah when you ask me something, I'm going to say yes. So I've been working on it. So and, yes, I'm ready. To yes, you are ready. And how, what have you done to work on that? I just talked to people, and I said, if you find me saying, yeah, correct me. I'm laughing because I know my husband's watching this and thinking, you guys are so much alike, but he already knows that, because that's what I would he do. He says, he told me at one time, that you were a clone <laughs> of mine. <laughs> uh, Mom, what, tell me what you feel or think about communication skills, the importance of that. I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. I, this is probably wrong for me to think this. But if people cannot have, do not have good cra grammar, I don't think they're educated. Mm -hmm. And they can be a, a pioneer, mm -hmm. they can be a, a, a just up there in their field, mm -hmm. and I still don't think they're educated, which is you know, I, wrong of me to feel and that way. And they could be educated, it's just that the perception is that they might not be. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. I, I know of people that are highly educated, and I don't know what kind of a family they were brought in, mm -hmm brought up in, but, but they, their grammar is atrocious, mm -hmm. and why somebody didn't correct them when they were little, I'll never know. I remember when you were working years ago, and you worked with a woman, and what did you say to her on that topic? Well, I, I asked her, do you mind, she was a nurse, mm -hmm. and very, very brilliant. Uh -huh. I said, do you mind if I correct your grammar? And she said, is it bad? And I said, oh, yes. <laughs> and it was probably three weeks, and she was completely over her bad grammar. 
Was she grateful to you? Yes. Yes, she, she mentioned it quite often, that she was thankful. In fact, she told me that she had gone on a trip with her family, her mother and her sisters, and she said, Millie, she said, it was atrocious. She said, you should have heard the conversations. She said, and I used to talk that way. So you made her aware and yes. also helped her with that. It, she was What aware. a gift, Mom. Well, I was brought up in a family that uh, appreciated good grammar. Talk to me about that. Well, I, I'm one of eleven children. In the middle, I'm the seventh, mm -hmm. seventh one. Now I'm the baby because I'm, I'm, there are only three of us left, and I'm the baby, which I never thought I was going yes, to be. Yes, you have the a baby. sister that's 99 and one that's 95. Yeah, one that will be 100 this year. Uh huh. Okay. So we live long. Yes. We, most of us. <laughs> yes. And. Uh, Growing up, I had my oldest sister was a school teacher, and she taught way, way back. And uh, she taught in a one-room schoolhouse, all eight grades. And she was barely older than some of the children that she was teaching. And I think she brought it home, this love of grammar, because we all, all of us, have a love of grammar and love of words. Mom, I can reinforce that because I remember living in San Francisco and coming back for a family reunion that we held at one of my aunt's lake cottages. And I walked in from, I don't know, some going outside to do something and you and your brothers and sisters were sitting around a great big circular table and you were talking about words and that struck me because I wasn't aware that that was important to your family till that moment. I knew it was important to me and I didn't know why. But your, all, your brothers and sisters were talking about words, not just using words, but talking about words. I, uh, I, loved, I loved hearing that. Now you, I remember something else about Grandpa. Now your maiden name is Snelker. Yes. And didn't, did you have an encyclopedia growing up too, Mom? Oh yes, I, I still have that old encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. encyclopedia. Um, and, and we used it. And, the, the thing was that if you ask my parents or Gretchen, my oldest sister, anything they said, go look it up. They never told you the answer. They expected you to go look it up, which we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I appreciate that now more than when I was a child. Mm -hmm. Now, your, your brothers all got to go to college. Yes. And do you wish that you had? Oh, yes. But in our family, they, they felt that the, fa the brothers would be the head of the household uh -huh. and the sisters would be mothers. Mm -hmm. And they thought it was far more important for the boys to be educated than the girls. Mother, what kind of theory did you bring us? Uh, I am the oldest of four, three younger sisters. In what ways did you pattern your parenting after your sister who helped with the English and your parents who fostered education? I think I automatically corrected grammar. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which may not have been, I think you appreciate it now more than when you were growing up, that, that uh, you, you appreciate it now that you do have good grammar. Yes. I, I appreciated it then, too. We were talking at uh, lunch today, and twice you, I said a word, and then you gave me a better word. <laughs> And I loved it. I loved the word you gave better than the word I had. I, I do that to you, uh -huh. but I don't do it to anybody else. That's because you're my clone, I guess. <laughs> well, and you know how much I love words, and if it's a better word, it's a better idea. Well, and I have found that you can finish a sentence for me, and I can finish a sentence for you. Mm -hmm. So I think our thought process is probably along the same lines. Mm -hmm. That's true. When, uh, when we were growing up, one of my sisters is profoundly deaf, and so that meant many hours you spent with Marilyn. Yes. And what did you do with her? Well, first of all, I loved her. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, she did not want me to teach her anything, mm -hmm. which was sad because I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So she, she, when she was four, she, we enrolled her in a speech and reading clinic. And uh, they, when she lost her hearing at four, she couldn't remember in for a year. She didn't say a word, and she didn't hear a word, and she so she lost all, everything that she had learned up to that point, and so she had to learn all over again. And one of the worst words to teach her, 
hardest word for her to learn was God. Because at, in lip reading, you really can't see it when you, when you say God. Mm -hmm. And so when she finally sell, it said God, we, were, we had cause to celebrate. Yes. That was, uh, I remember growing up and knowing that you worked with her, with her uh, homework all the time and taught her how to speak. And then I remember before I moved to San Francisco that I worked with her for hours and yes, hours. Yes, you worked with her more than I did. Really? Yes. She was at the point where people thought she had an accent and didn't know she was deaf. That's how well she spoke. So. And we were so happy. They had told us, <clears throat> excuse me, at first that she would never hear again. Mm -hmm. she, uh, the hearing aid would never, would never do her any good. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she was at school, little by little, they had put a they put the earphone on, and little by little, they added a little uh, sound. And they called me one day, and they said, Marilyn is, is ready for a hearing aid. And that was a oh, cause for rejoicing, because her voice up to then was way up here. Mm -hmm. And when, when she got her hearing aid, we, her voice was down, down normal. Mm -hmm. And although it, she never could use it as much as I would have liked her to mm -hmm. use it, I mean, she. She still she couldn't used it. hear. She, she used could it. hear low vibrations. She could hear. She could hear the telephone ring, uh -huh. and she could hear a horn honking, mm -hmm. and she could hear tones of voice that she had a difficult time understanding voices. But that's when lip and reading, uh, lip reading came in. And that's another thing too. We had to lip read. So when you form your words, you form them intentionally. I, when I was on Channel Twenty One, I have heard. I heard from viewers who said. We like it when you do stories because we can understand, because I formed words, because we had to with our sister, because we did not learn sign language until she went away to New York to a Rochester Institute of Technology for the Deaf. And by that time, I was living in San Francisco, and my sisters were scattered. Yeah. We know it now to some extent. Yeah. And then Marilyn went on to become an uh, uh, architectural engineer mm -hmm. and did well. Mm -hmm. Very, very proud of that. I want to get back to something else. In your 60s, mother, I think it was your 60s, you decided to be proactive about your brain. Is that about the time you started crossword puzzles? Probably. My oh. father used to wear them years and years ago, and uh, my youngest sister, mm -hmm. or no, my older sister, Jeanette, mm -hmm. used to wear crossword puzzles. And I, I, I had no interest, but I thought, I want to keep my brain Mm -hmm. And this was one of, one of the ways that I thought would help. And you do it every day, just about, huh? Well, that, and I have, I have a couple other games that I play that uh, we play Boggle. The family has, has a, a team, a snooker team, and we Boggle online. I have a cousin in, in uh, uh, or a sister in Wichita, that plays, and a nephew a in Indianapolis, year old. Yes. and then a sister-in-law in Fort Wayne, and I play. And then we have a friend of, of uh, my uh, nephew who plays from Indianapolis, too. And you have some nieces, and, uh, and nieces play, and yes. grandchildren from yes. other parts of the world. Yes. So they all get in, and, they, and it's Team Snelker, and you do that twice a week, don't you, Mother? Yes. Okay, and so I've heard from the people who play with you that you, you do very well. well I don't do as well as, as uh, my nephew in Indianapolis and his, his friend there, they, they're way up there and I'm down here. But what does that do for your brain? I think it stimulates it. Mm -hmm. I hope it does. Now I gave you for your birthday a gift that yes. <laughs> you Lumos loved. I love it. Okay. It's Lumos Lumosity mm -hmm. and it's brain games and they're, they're various and fun games. Uh, and uh, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. I want to thank you again well, for giving welcome. it to me. You got one for yourself, Yes, too. I did. How are you well, doing with it? Not as well as you. Okay. I, they give you a scope, uh, a graph of how you're doing, and mine has gone up, so it is working. I'm not as active in it as you are, because, and I love the fact that you're, you're, you do it. I do it every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. Wow, mother, I'm impressed. Are you I'm smarter trying now? To, I'm trying to impress you. Okay, are you smarter now? Uh, of course I'm smarter <laughs> now. <laughs> Why do I even ask? <laughs> now tell me what else you've done to, are, 
all right, you, you, pay, you play Lumosity, you've played Boggle online, you have done crossword puzzles since you were in your 60s, and you also are still active playing bridge, right? Oh, uh, Pinnacle at this point. Mm -hmm. I play bridge on my computer. It's one of my games that I play. Mm -hmm. and, but I do play Pinnacle with a group twice a week, uh, one time for money. <laughs> <laughs> for money? Everybody get that? <laughs> Uh, not much. Not for not, not for much. growth, not for brain thing, just no. for money. Oh well, we we each throw a dollar in, uh -huh. and there's about twenty people, twenty of us mm -hmm. play, and uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy any card game. And then you play bridge online. Yes. And I heard somebody told me that you won bridge online because the bridge software you got the people the your partners were not oh horrible. They were hor they're horrible. They're just not smart enough for you, mom, or not smart enough. For me. <laughs> Well, so now, what are, what is your theory about growing? And you're 93. Are, are, do you plan to keep this up? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I don't think of myself as being old until somebody reminds me, or I look in the mirror, <laughs> and then I realize it. But I, uh, uh, I, I plan. I, I plan to. Mm -hmm. You tackle things with enthusiasm. Yes. And. You also, you're teachable, and you, you love growing. Yes. And I have admired that, and Mother, I've caught I, that. You, you're, I, I think you caught that from me. Yes, I did. I caught that from you. And I'm, I thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, what have you passed on to your grandchildren, do you think? And to your children? Politeness, I hope. Uh, love of family, mm -hmm. I hope. And the, in the, now I know that our girls, one of them is in broadcasting in, my, my girls, one of them is broadcasting in the Air Force. The other one is teaching, going into education. Uh, you have three other granddaughters, all of whom are excellent writers. Mm -hmm. uh, some of that is our side of the family. Some of that is who, the other side, the, the father's side. They have been around you and have also caught not only your excitement about learning and growing in communication, but the importance of it. Yes, yeah. I, I hope so. Okay, I talked to Kate last night because I told her, Kate is my younger daughter, and I said, I'm going to be interviewing Grandma about communication skills, what memories do you have? She said, we would go over to Grandma's house and play Boggle, and she wouldn't let, she wouldn't let us win because that's... Yeah, if, don't play, I won't play with you unless you're a good winner and a good loser. Mm -hmm. So they had word games, word games, word games. She said, I don't remember the television being on that much, Mom. Uh, let's see, what else did she say? And she said you would bring out Reader's Digest and, you, and articles that she thought that you thought that they would be interested in, and you would read them to them. Or if they were easy enough to read, you would give it to Kate or Christy and say, now you read it. And you read the article to us, and we'll talk about it. And I did not know that till last night. So look what you have done with your grandchildren. Look at the legacy that has already been passed on. Well, it could have been from you, too. I know. That's true. You know how sometimes people are mother deaf, but they're not grandmother deaf? It's, okay. Im it's important. And, I, and, and, and another thing for their other grandma, I want to say, both girls write thank you notes, and that's a communication skill because their other grandma, it's very important to her. And so our girls write thank you notes for Christmas gifts, even. And just thank you notes for things in general. I got a, th uh, a birthday card from Christy, and she was saying, Mom, you are this and this. Thank you for, being, for teaching me so much, and I look forward to what I'm going to learn from you in the future. She said, you are a unique person. And then she said, okay, you're just like Grandma Millie. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's two of you. So I, I wanted to pass that on, too. But that's the legacy of both grandmothers. Both mm -hmm. grandmothers have fostered communication skills that's in our true. children. Another time I want to uh, thank you for that. Now, you're also involved in organizations. Sometimes you head up. What is the organization you're involved in, Mom? Uh, it's called Harvest House. It's okay. older people. And I try to, they, I always have a joke. They'll say, Millie, have you got a joke today? I always have a joke. And um, also articles that I find fascinating, I will read to them. Mm -hmm. And you do that. That's my love language. And you know that because you'll either email me something and say, read this, or when you come over to visit, you'll say, here are three more articles in something that you will enjoy. Thank you. 
once again You're welcome. for that. Now, do you do that with other people or not as much. Okay. I do. I have a group of people that I that I email to. But uh, you get more of the articles than the rest of them. I want to share something else with you. When I left um, after college and I moved to San Francisco, I remember taking only three things. Well, three categories. I remember taking some clothes, a sewing machine, and five books, mother. And those books were all vocabulary building. Who knew? I, I don't even know why I started focusing on vocabulary building after college. But I did, and I think it was because you kept saying, look it up, look it up. Can you use a better word for that? And the grammar, uh, correction, et cetera. And it didn't backfire. I, I would suppose it would. Okay, would you encourage parents to correct grammar? Absolutely, absolutely. Another thing that I started doing later in life is I love taking trips, mm -hmm. and uh, I would start, um, uh, ca um, what do you call that? Journaling. Journaling. Journaling my trips. And, and uh, I found after 30 years, after I'd been someplace, to read it again just brings back wonderful memories. I'm so glad you said that because here... Did you bring that along? I did. Uh, this is a journal. This is a diary that Mother... It was in 1971. She and I went to Martinique to see a cousin who was a missionary there. And I have not a lot of memories of it. My mother has hundreds of memories. So she said, Elizabeth, would you like to look through this? I, I found it lately. And oh my, it brought back everything. But Mom, some of these are things I don't even remember. My thought is that I would have remembered had I written them. And the other thing is it's all in ink. And I think you had two words crossed out, well-written, wonderful, wonderful diary. And uh, what, a week and a half, you wrote down of everything that happened here that it was of interest. That's right. Yes. And, and, and while we're getting out books, I wanted to also <laughs> emphasize the fact that our family does indeed love words. This is a college grammar book, and it was written by my uncle who attended Kent State, or who uh, taught yes, at Kent State? Taught Kent State. Harold Van Winkle. So, grammar book. Ha! Ah, wonderful. He was a great guy. They, they, uh, my sister and he met in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. She, at that time, after she decided at, that she had enough teaching, so she worked in the uh, Census Bureau in Washington, D.C., and there she met her future husband, the United States government pulled out a call for teachers to go to the Philippines. I guess that they had like 60 dialects that they were speaking and they thought, let's get them all to, to speak English. So my uncle went and he was there for oh, three, four months and he wrote to my sister and he said, ask to be invited to come over too because she was a teacher also. Mm -hmm. and, so she was, she was invited and they got married mm -hmm. and they spent 10 years over there teaching the Philippines and, and now, and then the people that they taught are now teaching English. So it, you know, it spiraled. Mm -hmm. And then after 10 years, World War II broke out and they said, uh, you must get out or you're likely to be killed. So they came home uh, at that time. And that helped so much in the family, and Uncle, Uncle Harold went on to teach at Kent State. Mm -hmm. What a legacy. Uh, Mother, what would, what would you say to people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, hundreds about growing? Well, I don't think you should ever not grow. I mm -hmm. mean, I always, people ask me, uh, why, are you, why, why are you so young? And, I, and, you, you know, and you're thinking, and I said, well, I'm interested in everything that goes on. And if somebody said, let's do this or let's do that, I'm always willing to go. And so I, I do get invited to a lot of things, and I always go, and I always enjoy myself. It doesn't matter what it is, I always enjoy myself. What is your self-talk? Say if you make a mistake, or, if, or if, uh, how, what do you say to yourself that has gotten you through your life so far? You understand the question? Well, I will tell you this. 
I was divorced uh, after about 20 years of marriage, mm -hmm. and I decided at that time I was not going to be afraid to do anything. I was not going to be afraid to try, well, not try anything. I wouldn't try drugs, no, but, right. but I was going to be, uh, you know, um, what do I want to say? I, I was going to be accept, accept whatever people uh, gave me. Mm -hmm. And so that has been my life. Mm -hmm. I remember when I lived in San Francisco that I was watching you ride a bicycle across the Golden Gate Bridge right that in front was... of me, and you had never ridden a bike bicycle with, the, for... with the brakes on the handles, and I kept thinking, oh, I, I prayed the whole time. But I also, you and I went down a mountain in Puerto Vallarta on the back of horses. Uh, you ha every time we went on vacation, we did something exciting, and you always said you would do that. I appreciated that about you, and I think that's something that our family has learned and has... Uh, Not only that, I could talk about it later. Yes, yes. And you grew. Grew. Yes, because I remember when we were in Italy one time, and the people behind us in line were speaking English, and you turned around and you said, are you from Ohio or Michigan and Indiana? And they said, no, we're from South Africa. And it opened your world. And when we came home, my sister wrote me and said, Mom's not a small town girl anymore. <laughs> Suddenly you subscribed to National Geographic. Suddenly you were interested in so many other things because before that, you hadn't left the country. That's right. So mm -hmm. it, it inspired you to learn and grow. I have another question. What legacy would you like to leave? Uh, you mean for people to remember me? Yes, yes. That I was kind and I was helpful. Mm -hmm. That's it. Kind and helpful. Yes, and you are that. You always have time. You make time to help others. We've concentrated on uh, keeping your brain up and also communication skills. And when we've not talked about all the people you've helped in the, in the world and the fact that you've given your life to doing just that. That's another legacy that's very important. Mother, we have a half a minute. What do you want to tell me that I have no idea, that I don't know oh anything my. about? Real quickly, you have to be fast. I have to be fast? Yes. Well, I guess I, what I'm really happy about is that I had four daughters and that I love all of them dearly and that they all are, I'm proud of each one of them. Thank you. And on behalf of my sisters who will be seeing the show, I want to thank you too. Thank you, Mom. I love you. And I don't get to say that to too many of my guests. God bless you. I love you too. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for listening in on this mother-daughter conversation. I hope that it, this has inspired you to keep on doing what you're doing. And until next time on The Verbal Edge, have a very pleasant evening and a very good life. Bye-bye. <laughs>